Welcome back to Science Click. Today, geodesics and relativity. What is the distance between these two points? We could take a ruler, place it on the screen, and read how many centimetres separate point A from point B. We could also ask an ant to walk straight from one point to the other, and count the number of steps it has to take. We measure the distance in centimetres in the first case, and in number of steps in the second. But imagine now that points A and B are on the surface of a sphere. What is the distance between them now? At first sight, we could take the ruler again and place it between points A and B to measure how many centimetres separate them. But if we ask the ant to walk from A to B, since it remains on the surface of the sphere, it will follow a different path from the straight line measured by the ruler. The ant must walk a greater distance because the sphere is curved, it has to cover a whole arc. It does not measure the same distance as the ruler. Our sphere is a two-dimensional surface immersed within a three-dimensional space. The ruler measures a distance through space in three dimensions. We allow it to lie outside the surface of the sphere. On the other hand, the distance measured by the ant is two-dimensional. It is measured along the geometry of the surface. When we are interested in the intrinsic geometry of a surface, we don't focus on the distance measured by the ruler, but on the distance an ant would travel. We measure this with a metric. A metric is a mathematical tool, which, at any point, gives us a grid, tangent to the object, along which we can measure lengths and angles. To measure the length of the whole path travelled by the ant, we would add the length of each of its steps. At each step, the metric gives us a grid, within which we can measure the small distance that the ant has just covered. By repeating this process for each step, we obtain the total length it has walked. But what is the distance between A and B? By definition, the distance between two points is the length of the shortest path that connects them. But at the moment, we don't know if the path followed by the ant is optimal. It might have walked in zigzags and taken a longer path than the true distance between the two points. The metric allows us to measure the length of a path, but it doesn't tell us whether or not this path is the shortest one possible. Finding the true distance between A and B amounts to finding the most direct trajectory that connects them. To do this, we can imagine sending tens or even hundreds of ants on the journey. Each ant will try a different path. They all start from point A, but some get to point B quickly, while others take more time. Thanks to the metric, we can measure the length of each path, and by comparing them, find the ant which has travelled the shortest path. If we imagine that we have tested the infinity of possible routes, we are now able to determine the shortest path. The optimal path to get from A to B. This path determines the distance between the two points. This type of trajectory is called a geodesic. It is the generalization of a straight line, a trajectory along which one walks one foot in front of the other. Each step takes us forward along the same direction as the previous step. We never stray off course. On the surface of a plane, geodesics are simply straight lines. That's why we can measure distances with a ruler. When connecting two points, visiting a third point that is not aligned with the other two will always require a longer travel time. We call this the triangle inequality. On the surface of a sphere, the geodesics are known as great circles. They cover the greatest possible circumference. On Earth, for example, lines of longitude are geodesics. A flight from Rome to Copenhagen will only be as short as possible when following this precise curve. On the other hand, apart from the equator, lines of latitude are not geodesics. 
they are not great circles on the sphere. To connect two points at the same latitude, such as Paris and Quebec, there is a faster path. The field of differential geometry has developed a whole variety of tools to characterize the curvature of a surface. One of the most important tools is the so-called curvature tensor. It is an object which expresses how geodesics evolve compared to each other. It measures the curvature of a geometry because the more curvature there is, the faster the geodesics will converge or diverge from each other. And conversely, the flatter the surface, the more its geodesics tend to stay parallel to each other. When looking at more complex surfaces, geodesics can take interesting shapes. On the surface of this funnel, for example, straight lines seem to be deflected near the central hole. When viewed from above, these geodesics appear to bend in a manner very similar to how light rays are lensed near a black hole. And this is not a coincidence, light rays get bent for the same reason. The universe in which we live is not a two-dimensional surface, it is a hypersurface with four dimensions. Three dimensions of space and one of time. This is space-time. All objects in the universe evolve through space-time in the same way that the ant walks on the sphere. But in space-time, the distance between two events is not only their distance through space, but also through time. When they don't experience any force, bodies in the universe have no reason to turn one way or the other. Objects have a tendency to move straight ahead, and they hence follow geodesics. They move along straight lines within the geometry of the universe. Our universe is very diverse, and the metric that describes its geometry can vary from place to place. In an empty region of the universe, space-time is almost flat. The geodesics are the usual straight lines, and all objects or light rays move straight ahead at a constant speed. We call this the Minkowski metric. It is the type of space-time described by special relativity. Any motion between two objects is relative. All positions and directions are equivalent. However, Close to a massive body, space-time gets bent. For bodies that are spherical, isolated, and stable over time, we consider the Schwarzschild metric. It is the most common metric in general relativity. The geodesics correspond to deflected trajectories, or orbits. If the Moon revolves around the Earth, it is because it follows a straight line, a geodesic, but within a curved geometry somewhat like the funnel we saw before. The only difference is that this geodesic is not only aligned through space, it also describes the trajectory through time. When an apple falls off a tree from a previously motionless state, it is because the curvature of space-time bends the geodesics between time and space. The apple, which was moving only through time, gets gradually deflected off course. Its flow through time gets converted into a speed through space. When the attracting body is extremely massive, like a static black hole, the Schwarzschild metric describes a sort of hole, a spherical region of space, much like the hole in a funnel. The metric seems broken. This is called the Schwarzschild radius, or more commonly, the event horizon. As seen from outside, no object can cross this horizon. That said, it is just an illusion, like the North Pole on Earth, which breaks apart when we flatten it on a map. An apparent singularity. In reality, from the point of view of a spacecraft approaching the black hole, it is possible to cross this region. Unfortunately, the spacecraft would end up bumping into another singularity, a real one this time, 
a point where the curvature becomes infinite and that modern science cannot yet understand. Finally, there exist a multitude of other places in the universe with more complex metrics, such as the Kerr metric, which describes black holes with a very fast rotation, with a central ring singularity, or the FLRW metric, which stands for Friedman, Lemaitre, Roberts and Walker, which describes an approximation of space-time on a large scale, by expressing the curvature and the expansion of the entire cosmos. It is at the origin of the Big Bang Theory.